So, engaging uh, with tenants. Tenants, as I said, hold the incentives associated with EUAs, behind the, the, the headlines. An environmental upgrade agreement can work with most existing leases. As a lot of you are probably aware, the difference between one lease and a net lease is as diverse and varied as there, there are responses to energy efficiency opportunities. So we put a big caveat on top of that. Under most net leases, um, uh, outgoings form part, oh sorry, uh, council rates and charges form part of the outgoings component under net leases and be able to pass through by agreement uh, to tenants. Um, the tenant is not party to the agreement. So the tenant doesn't sign the agreement. Therefore, it kind of fo follows that they're really going to be impacted by the cash flow of this. They wouldn't own the asset. The asset would be that of the building owner. Um, and especially if it's a chiller upgrade or things like that. And uh, they're very much exposed to the savings that they would achieve and the risks of future energy price rises, but also the costs of the EUAs. So therefore, tenants are really exposed to the success or failure of your project. I've, I've been dealing with this for a, a number of years and, and you know, <laughs> I haven't been able so far to see too many losers in this uh, uh, equation. The only losers are really created when uh, you get a project that doesn't meet expectations. That means you're signing up to a capital cost or a, a future debt obligation that is greater than the value delivered to the building owner. Now, however, we ha have some of these better performing building uh, uh, values that by, by and of themselves may uh, indicate that it's a better investment to make. Um, the risk really is that ten tenants uh, don't see the savings that they were meant to be seeing and the real risk then comes back to the, uh, to the building owners that I'm unhappy with what you're doing to the building, therefore I'm going to leave, therefore my valuation is, is under threat. Um, successful projects will deliver successful outcomes for all stakeholders. The city wants to see reduced, improved environmental outcomes. Uh, building owners want to see their tenants happy or repositioning of tenants. You want to see projects get done. Uh, investors want to get see projects get done. I want to see projects get done. You know, it's a win-win solution so long as we deliver successful projects. So we're really going to focus on a couple of uh, hypothetical examples here about, about what, really, what real opportunities are unlocked by EUAs. The first one is uh, the benefit of the charge remaining with a building. And the second one we're going to look at tenant consent is basically the opportunities from a tenant's perspective associated with environmental upgrade agreements. So the first one, so let's look at the tenant, tenant perspective on cash flows. We were assuming here that we're looking at a comprehensive project and by a comprehensive project I mean a base building upgrade combined with a, a, a tenancy lighting upgrade. You'll note that on our um, common improvements list that we've specifically included tenancy lighting. That's the lowest hanging fruit in the building. That's the one where, which blended with higher, higher hanging fruit gives the economics to it. It's fine, financiers are happy to finance out to 10 years. We're gonna look at a, a five or seven year kind of scenario. And this is low risk technologies. They've got proven success of, of going into it. And because uh, tenants aren't signing this, we're gonna actually just look at the cash flow implications from a tenant's perspective. Okay, so, <coughs> pardon me. We've probably all seen uh, something like this. You'll see that the numbers on the left uh, on the left hand side are just kind of made up. But essentially, what that basically says: if you do nothing to your building, and you stay in the in there as a tenant over time, you're going to be paying more and more and more and more for energy use over time. Assuming that everything else stays constant, energy prices are going up, and that those opportunities are out there. Um, we're going to, and that that we've just put a 10% per annum escalation rate in there. So that just really, for illustrative purposes, and see my disclaimer here. So then you walk through the building and you basically say to building owners, all right, we can do all of this X, Y, and Z. If you do A, B, and C, this will deliver these kind of cash flows from here. So the dark blue area basically saying, if you didn't do anything, that's what you would be spending. If you did do something, that's what you would be spending. And, <clears throat> and this is just a cash flow analysis. It hasn't yet taken into consideration um, how you actually pay for uh, the opportunity that you're getting by that light blue area underneath. 
You'll also note the power of hedging is starting to show up in, in this graph here, that, that out to 10 years, the difference between the dark blue and the light blue is actually divergent. You've replaced the volatile cost with the fixed cost, and we can talk about that one uh, following this example. So to actually get that benefit, you've had to pay for it. So we've actually inserted in here a graphical representation of the cost of an EUA. We've basically done this over a five-year, including costs of capital, five-year period. You have a fixed charge come in there, and you've got these savings materialised. So that actually represents the real cash flows of the program. In net terms, what does that show up? Well, basically, the red area is the net benefit over time. So as time increases, t uh, energy prices escalate, and uh, my, my benefit beyond my costs um, actually increases. And then once my debt obligations finish at year five, I capture all of the savings. So in this, in this scenario here, we're assuming that you're going to use all of the savings to pay for, based upon year one, the, uh, the debt obligations. So you'll note that in year, year one, there's actually zero red area. What that basically means is I'm no net worse off, but I'm no net better, better off either on the cash flow terms. And what that means over the, over the, the uh, five year term here, that red area uh, to the left of five years is basically equivalent to $60. That's what uh, the, 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 the basic economics really look at. But what happens if you don't actually use all of the cash flow that you're going to use in year one to pay for um, the upgrade? So what that basically means is now I finance the same project over a seven year period. Now that means that basically you have a five year simple payback project including ca capital costs financed over seven years means that when you compared it to the previous one, you had $60 over five years net in your pocket. Now under this same scenario over five years, you have $117 within your pocket. So you're reducing the, the EUC liability but spreading it out over a longer term from a cash flow basis, this project now becomes cash positive. So th this is a comprehensive project. So now the argument that actually starts up, well, how do we share that $117 uh, that we're now generating within our projects? Um, from all, from also from a tenant's perspective, to get this kind of value, uh, you're also looking at, at something that I'm not having to spend my money uh, to get this benefit. And normally they would have to spend their money on uh, a tenancy lighting upgrade to capture the most of this opportunity. The other, the, the other aspect uh, to that is essentially what a tenant is really doing is currently, if we went back to the five-year scenario, uh, business as usual, they're currently spending 30%, this is a 20% saving, so they're spending 20% too much money on their energy, gas and water bills. What we're now saying is take that 20% from your business, reallocate it to paying back an environmental upgrade charge uh, financed over... Uh, five years and you'll be no net worse off, but if you finance it over seven years, you're going to be better off, which is quite an attractive proposition. So why is this illustration important? How many of you have actually walked into businesses and said, yeah, we've got energy efficiency, it's going to save the world, um, why don't you get on, on board? How many of you heard, that's all great, but I want to pay back within three years because my lease runs out within three years? I see a lot of nodding heads in the room. Basically, that's the problem with um, uh, traditional debt finance. If I put money, I want to see the, the total return come back to me before I leave and I want to get the benefits from it. That's a completely rational decision. Now, from a, from a tenant's perspective, now, if a, ten if a building owner comes to them and says, actually, I want to work with you to upgrade your tenancy lighting, I'll pay for it, you just agree to pay part of the charge, and because it's a charge on the land, it doesn't actually have to have the, uh, the payback within those five years because it's a cash flow equation. So you suddenly look at a five-year project has to be paid off in five years using debt. When you finance it over seven years, you now see that the cash flow benefit flows to tenants. So you can actually work with, with building owners and tenants now to actually overcome that barrier of saying, well, it's got to have a three-year payback. Well, you structure something that might have a seven-year payback financed over 10 years. You give cash flow positivity and there's more money in the business to be shared between building owners and tenants. Um, 